The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. After a 12-year hiatus, professional box lacrosse returns to Long Island from NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The Saskatchewan Rush visit the New York Riptide. It is the home opener. Fans are revved up for the Rush and the New York Riptide from Uniondale, New York. And welcome inside the arena, everybody, with former NLL champion Mitch Belisle. I'm Dave Leno. Danny Wetzelman will join us shortly. What are the players feeling in anticipation for the inaugural home opener? You were part of Boston in 2009 playing in that inaugural home opener. What are the players expecting in anticipation for tonight's game? It's an exciting time. They couldn't be more excited to get out on the floor. They've got friends in the stands, family in the stands, and most importantly, they get to play at home finally. It's been a couple games on the road, and they're looking forward to giving the fans what they want, which is a great, hard-hitting, great game in front of them. This is the start of a three-game homestand for the New York Riptide. What are you expecting from this team on the tail end of a back-to-back? -back? Yeah, you usually have a little bit more of that flow going after you have the back-to-back -back game. So look for them to come out with a hot start, but then they have to keep that going in the second half as the legs start to get tired and they start to drag a little bit because of that second game in less than 24 hours. Let's send it downstairs to the third member of our broadcast team, Danny Wexelman. Thank you, guys. I caught up with some of the players earlier today, and some of them said they actually didn't get a ton of sleep last night. We know they had a game last night coming home, but they couldn't sleep because they realized that history is being made at the barn as we speak right now. And they realized as well the game the games haven't gone the way that they want them to yet. There's been some speeches made to get these guys revved up and ready to go. There are grandmas and uncles and a ton of family in the stands for these guys. And we talked to Kieran McArdle, who has over 50 family members and friends here in the stands. He's the local hometown kid, and they're ready to rock and roll. Guys. Thank you very much, Danny. A daunting task for the New York Riptide tonight, Mitch, because they're playing a Saskatchewan team who has won this league three of the last five years, won four consecutive West Division crowns, and the New York Riptide are going to have to be really sound on the offensive end. Yeah, they get a key in on those big three. They've got Matthews, Church, McIntosh. Those guys can score goals by the dozens, and they need to make sure they limit them and also their transition game. They put a lot of pressure on the Riptide as they carry that ball out of their defensive end, so they need to do a nice job making sure to take care of it and get good offensive possessions. The New York Riptide were up at New England last night. They lost that game 21-11, to but they were off to a great start up 2 nothing. But then what went wrong for the Riptide? Yeah, the key was they came out shooting, and they made sure to get those shots early and often. That allowed them to get into a little bit of the rhythm on offense, and they were able to chip away even though they went a little bit of a skid behind uh, behind a big run by the New England Black Wolves. They continued to make sure that they kept fighting, bringing it back to within 13-10 towards the end of the third quarter. In fact, it was an 11-0 run for New England. This New York team was three for six on the power play, but it was a plus 40 advantage on loose balls in favoring of New New England, they cannot afford that. And then the fight after the game involving Digby. Yeah, they, they kept scrapping, and that's a key that Coach Thorpe mentioned and bringing Suter back in the lineup after he missed the game two. It was key to make sure they keep scrapping, keep fighting no matter what they're doing. Well, good news that the New York Riptide will get Tyson Gibson, number one pick out of Robert Mars, had one goal, four assists last night. What can he bring to the floor on the offensive end? You mentioned the four assists. He is a visionary player. He can see the play before it develops, but he's also going to be counted on to score some goals himself. So look for him to make sure that he's dishing the ball when there's players open and also taking the ball to the rack when he gets some, some looks. And how about the hometown product, Kieran McCardle, the three-time All-American from St. John's? Yeah, Kieran, is a, he's found his stride over the last three years. He played in Toronto where he got an opportunity to learn from some of the best players and coaches in the league, and now he's actually able to go out and, and execute game in, game out, doing it in front of his hometown, friends, family. It's going to be key. Saskatchewan comes in 1-1. One one. The New York Riptide of the flip side come in 0-3 oh for this matchup, but it is the home opener for the New York Riptide. The face-off between the Rush and the Riptide is coming up next on MSG and BR Live. Stay with us.
The NLL on MSG and BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 50% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Dave Leto, Mitch Belial, Danny Wexelman, and our entire crew from Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. It's a historic night as professional box lacrosse returns to Long Island, a massive renovation at the Coliseum, and we're excited to bring you New York Riptide Lacrosse, part of our NLL Game of the Week. There you see the New York Riptide and head coach Reggie Thorpe going up against the Saskatchewan Rush have won titles in three of the last five games. Let's go downstairs to Danny Wexelman. Danny. Hey guys, I've got Tyson Gibson here. Tyson, uh, this has been your dream since you were three years old. We know you saw your dad last night. You've got family in the stands. What does it mean to you to be here on the inaugural home, home opener? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's exciting. Um, I mean, we're so happy to see all these, all these people come out and support us. So, you know, we're just going to play hard and, and give them what we got. We've seen the team progress game in and game out. What are you here to prove tonight? Just keep getting better week by week, game by game, and, and go from there. Tyson, thank you. Guys? Thank you very much, Danny. All right, Mitch, take us through your keys to tonight's game. They need to lock it down on defense. And when I say they, I mean the New York Riptide. They need to shut down those big three we talked about. Mark Matthews, Robert Church, Ben McIntosh. They need to stop them off the top. And then on the other side of the ball, Saskatchewan, back to basics. Coach Keenan has been preaching it to them. They've done the right thing for the last five seasons. They need to get back to that, pass the ball, work hard, and make sure they're sharing the rock. Crew chief tonight is Bob Hollingsworth. In the middle for the faceoff, Jeremy Thompson for Saskatchewan in the road, white uniforms. Conversely, Alex Woodall in the home blue jerseys. It's the home opener for the New York Riptide, and we're underway from Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. It will belong to Saskatchewan. They're coming off of a December 14th, 12-8 loss to New England. So a two-week layoff for Saskatchewan, but a team that brings a huge pedigree into the NLL every single year. Yeah, they are, they are very scripted in their offense. They've been together for a long time. They do a nice job of sharing the ball, and they've got a ton of weapons. So it's going to be key to stop them early. First possession here for Saskatchewan. Look for Matthews, and the shot goes wide by Shatler. Bouquet is in the cage for the New York Riptide. And it looks like there's already going to be a penalty, so you see the referee's arms up. He's counting off those eight seconds. That the Riptide have to clear it. And you see Bouquet actually ran out of the ran out of the crease to the bench so they can get a sixth attacker on. Much like hockey, you can pull your goalie when there's a delayed penalty. Six on five here for the New York Riptide. And here's Lomas, who's had a hot start for New York, coming in at 0-3. That diagonal pass towards the quarter of the floor, and it's knocked down by Saskatchewan. See the pressure here up top by the rush. It's Corbeil in the 30-second shot clock, and we'll get our first call of the night upcoming. Again, the crew chief is Bob Hollingsworth. Looks like it's going to be a cross-checking call against Ben McIntosh, so a two-minute minor coming up here against Saskatchewan. The Saskatchewan took that shot. It bounced way up in the air. And three players, it was almost like a jump ball, went up for that. And it looks like one of the Saskatchewan players took a little advantage and cross-checked one of the Riptide. I didn't see it, but I saw someone go down hard. It was a little slow to get up, so it must have been behind the play. He got him. The New York Riptide last night for three for six on the power play. So here's New York on the advantage here. It's Jenner in that tie amid Evan Kirk. And into the crowd, it will come out here for the rush. But how have you seen the New York Riptide deliver on power plays, in particular, Mitch, in the last two games? They're starting to get better, and they're starting to get more comfortable taking those outside shots and finding those skip lanes, which open up the better shoot, the better shots. Right there, look, I thought it looked like someone got a piece of Cheddar stick as he shot that, and it fired out of, out of, the, out of the field of play. So they lose that possession, but with three and six last night, they gotta be better than 50%. That, that's the goal, you gotta be over 50% on the power play. Dinsdale is marked by two. It's now Church inside right at Bouquet, who has it for the first stop tonight. But Robert Church, as you mentioned in our pregame, Mitch, a guy to keep an eye out for, 
three goals, five assists in his fifth year with Saskatchewan. He's a West Coast kid, played his college ball at Drexel. He's just so, so dangerous and just does the dirty work. He, he's able to set those picks, but he's also such a strong finisher. He's reached 100 points uh, several times in, in 28, back in 2018, 107 points. So he's a guy they're definitely going to have to key in on. That was the first shot of Connor Kelly, who's had a great start. And Kelly has the loose ball, numbers the opposite way for the New York Riptide. Radzowitz, who wasn't in the lineup last night, back in and throws it over to Chetner and a change from Reggie Thorpe's group. Nice pressure. Getting much faster with the changes, though. Yeah, nice pressure there at the midline, recognizing they have that extra player and, and getting that pressure on the ball to force that turnover. Kelly with the screen and the shot knocked down by Lomas. Kelly trying to pick it up in the crease. Instead, it's Evan Kerr, the Hobart product, who gobbles it up in his third year with Saskatchewan. And here they are in transition with Messenger. Also has Jeff Shatler out there, 2011 league MVP, wearing number 77 in white for Saskatchewan. Their lone victory of the year came against the Colorado Madmen on November 29th. It's McIntosh quickly out of the box. The shot high of the bar, and the loose ball gobbled up by Fournier. Dave, these shots they're forcing him into, a couple floaters, and getting this early power play, that's really great for Bouquet to see the ball, feel the ball, and get a little bit of confidence building up. So it's nice to see that they force him into bad shots to give their defense a chance to really start getting some confidence, which they really need. And you've hit on it that they want to keep Saskatchewan on the outside shooting. Nothing close range, but there's a costly turnover in the middle of the floor. Yeah, something that plagued them last night was, was those knockdown or picked off passes. They got to make sure to take care of the ball on the offensive end because all those possessions are so valuable. Here's Church on the left side, getting a screen from McIntosh Bouquet with his second stop today. And the transition for the New York Riptide up the right wing. It's Jetner will fire wide of Kirk. Thompson can't scoop it up. And instead on the opposite way, here comes the Saskatchewan, and they get their first goal tonight by Robert Church, his fourth goal of the season, 1-0 the Rush lead. And smart play. This is just savvy veteran leadership. Church didn't sub off. He recognized, look, I'm not going to get back in the play. He's hanging out, almost cherry-picking there, because he recognized New York had a break, and if they didn't score, he was going to get an opportunity the other way. That's what we call reverse transition in the box game. And, that's just a smart, savvy play by a veteran of hanging out, waiting for that play to come back, and Church scores the goal. Drexel product Robert Church, his 204th career goal, was also an all-pro first-team player in 2018, drafted fifth overall in 2013. Chatler on a 2-1 here again for Saskatchewan, and they get one right back in with Holden Garland, the fourth overall pick in the draft. Just like that, Mitch, it's 2-0 rush. Yeah, and that quick transition is something that New York has to make sure on the on the faceoff, especially, they drop back and they play good defense. That was a little bit of a strange loose ball, and they got a, a nice two-on-one and a great play by Garland, protecting his stick and then just bringing that back and, and popping it over Bouquet's shoulder. This is what New York can ill afford. Almost a carbon copy, Mitch, that we saw last night at New England. The good news is, at New England, they actually went up 2-0 at the beginning. So hopefully this will be the other direction. Now they can go on and score 11 straight goals. Fournier off the face-off draw that was won by New York was looking for Lomas to no avail. Ryan Dilks and company have it for Saskatchewan. Shatler is in the middle for the rush here on their possession. McIntosh now, one of the assistant captains in his fifth year with Saskatchewan, got the screen from Disdale on the right this time. Tried to get it on the return off of his stick. There's the stick check by the New York Riptide, and it's won there nicely by Scott Johnston, a recent acquisition for the New York Riptide, and back on the active rice, uh, roster. And dodges over McIntosh that time. That was excellent defense by the Riptide. They shut it down. They made sure to fight through all those picks. And Scott Johnson and Cody Rad Radziewicz are doing a great job of providing a spark. They didn't play last night, and you can see they have fresh legs. They're setting the tone right now. To the right for the New York Riptide. Down two goals. Kieran McArdle, the hometown product. 1v2, an open team for Lomas walking in, and the shot denied by Kerr. He's made three stops, and there's the hit there on McArdle. Quick outlet here to Jeremy Thompson. 
Thompson 1v1, and the help comes out for the New York Riptide defensively. And Dave, something to notice. They doubled the ball deep in the corner. Watch for that with the rush here. Trying to double the ball as it gets pushed down. New York has to take that pressure and find the open man. And it's denied there. Buke makes the stop on Church, who was looking for his second goal tonight, to no avail. That will take us to our first timeout. Robert Church got the scoring started for Saskatchewan, and then the fourth overall pick, Garland, had the second. It's 2 0 Saskatchewan. We'll be back after this. Next Saturday, the NLL Game of the Week moves to Colorado as the Mammoth take on Mitch Jones and the Warriors in a West Division matchup. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook. That's next Saturday, starting with NLL Game Day Live at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We're back live at NYCB Live over the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Dave Leto, Mitch Belial, Danny Wexelman, and our entire crew as New York is down 2 0 to Saskatchewan. They were looking inside for Ryan Keenan. That's the coach, Derek Keenan's son. And now they're looking for, on this left hand side, McIntosh. McIntosh getting rid of the captain, Dan McRae, tried to get the rebound. And instead, here come the New York rip side in transition with John Rannigan. Dave, I feel like they've been had a spring in their step when it comes to picking up that, that rebound and that ground ball off the first try. That's huge, and that, I think, comes from playing the game last night. You're already in game speed, and they're doing a nice job of not being on their heels, but being on their toes. Two goals scored by Saskatchewan with 49 seconds in parts. Yeah, Thorpe trying to set those picks inside again, and the shot knocked down there again by Evan Kirk. Also played with New England from 2015 to 17. He's also part of the wings in Minnesota as well in the past. It's Messenger on the left-hand side, marked by two, and it's a great hit here by Johnston of New York. Lomas with a quick outlet there, but it was high in the stick on the opposite end. Scott Johnson again providing that spark, had the night of rest last night, coming in, trying to get that full-time spot on the roster, doing a really nice job of sparking that transition. Now they just need to connect on a few of those long passes. He was looking for Radzowicz that time. So against Saskatchewan in possession here with Church. Good stick checking here. Now in the middle, the shot is in! It's Connor Robinson, 3-0 Saskatchewan, and it's the third goal this year for Robinson. Robinson just does a, such a nice job of using his body, using his defender. He doesn't take a lot of time. He spins around and just shoots that right off his defender's hip, that low to high shot. As Shatler runs through, Bouquet might not have seen that. Jeff Shatler off ball, kind of runs through his field of vision, and, and that might have even deflected off someone, but that's a tough one. Bouquet was all over, and all of a sudden he screened out of nowhere. Robinson, the new Westminster, British Columbia product out of High Point. Led the team with 36 goals in 2018. He's in his second year with Saskatchewan. So, Mitch, take those that are watching at home through the minds of the New York Riptide. You're playing at the inaugural home opener here in Long Island where Fox Lacrosse returns to the Coliseum. What are the players feeling right now? Now down 3-0. I think the key is going to be making sure they can get this crowd into it, whether that's a goal, a big hit, or, or a power play, which we're seeing right here. A little bit of a, looks like there was an unsportsmanlike conduct here called and so after the whistle between the whistles taking advantage of those situations and, and capitalizing that's how you're going to get the crowd back into it so thompson goes into the box in the second power play opportunity tonight for the new york grip side so they get their power play unit onto the floor here it's gender on the right with the seam and that diagonal pass looking up top again gender gets it denied by kirk but they get the ball back, and that's key. Getting these resets is a great way to wear down the defense and also get more looks at the cage. And the Digby shot was stopped again by Evan Kirk. Kirk's looked good so far. The long outlet again. You're on the opposite side, and it's a good defensive play by Chetner. And Keenan coming out of that box quickly. You see Kirk immediately snaps his head upfield, looks for that long outlet pass. Nice job hustling the box by the defense to get the offense on by the rush. I mentioned that in the pregame. 
Coach Keenan gets his players to buy in to, to those quick line changes. So Digby out there with Chetner at the top. Here's on the right-hand side. John Luke Chetner, and it goes off the pipe there. Loose ball. Who wants it towards the corner? Lomas had it for a moment, and the loose ball is won here by Saskatchewan, and Corbeil, the captain. Lomas is, is giving the official an earful, as he should. He got thrown down by two rush players. That seemed like that should have been their ball, but a nice job of, again, getting those high-quality looks. Now they just got to get something to fall, get the crowd behind them, and start getting momentum on their side. 35 seconds left on the man advantage for the New York Riptide. There's Saskatchewan on the penalty kill, and the shot is in from the right wing, Mark Matthews. It's a six goal this year, four nothing Saskatchewan. And that's one of those goals where it's, it's tough on the defense. They're playing out. Matthews is near that white line, and that, this is, you can see why he's a multi-time all-star, multi-time member of Team Canada. Just an absolute snipe from the outside. That's tough because that gets your defense to start stretching out and then you give up the inside. So those are the ones that you gotta you gotta buckle down and hope your goalie can, can make that save. Um, so let's let's hope the bouquet can get a next save or two and, and if not, look for a, a change here in the net. Matthews out of Denver in his fifth year with Saskatchewan last year had 41 goals on the Saskatchewan team who lost in the divisional semifinals to Colorado. If you're just joining us, welcome to the NLL Game of the Week. Dave Leno, Mitch Belisle, Danny Wexelman, our entire crew from Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. One of five games in action across the National Lacrosse League tonight. For the box here defensively for Saskatchewan, Digby at the top and now on the right-hand side. Digby trying to reset. Thompson comes out of the box with a shot by Kelly. And the penalty kill again successful for Saskatchewan as the shot clock violation sounds. Yeah, that's two opportunities they need to take advantage of there. They're now negative one on the power play with, with the shorthanded goal there by the rush. So they have to take advantage of these opportunities when they get them. Pick set there by McIntosh over to the right-hand side. Now in the middle of the shot is wide. McIntosh tried to get the loose ball. Shatler went in for the big hit. Was on John Wagner, the product out of Marquette, his first game tonight, Donning a New York Riptide uniform. And you see the ref, he's counting off. That's an eight second count. Because New York had possession, they have eight seconds to clear it. They failed to do so. So the rush get the ball back with a fresh shot clock. And McIntosh now on the right hand side. The shot bouquet has it this time for New York. Wagner. Up the floor, here come the New York Riptide. Radigan, right hand side for Gail Thorpe. And what a night he had. He has three goals, the coach's son. Two goals, three assists last night at New England in the loss. It's McCardle this time, met by two. Working with the spacing, but the Aaron throw into the box. So you go back to Saskatchewan. Dave, you mentioned met by two. They force them down to the corner and then they double. That will take us to another timeout. 4.38 remaining in the first quarter. It's all Saskatchewan on the road for nothing. Saskatchewan coming in. Hey, welcome back. I, welcome back. I've got Ripside head coach Reggie Thorpe. Coach, what adjustments can your guys make? I know there's a lot of adrenaline running right now. What can they do to get on the board in this quarter? We just got to settle down. We're getting some good quality shots on that. We just got to bury them. We're getting some stops on D. Unfortunately, a couple of those shots went in by Saskatchewan. But we just got to keep battling. The shots will fall. Thank you, coach. Guys. Thank you very much, Danny and Reggie Thorpe, who spent 15 years with Rochester and won two titles, also was an assistant coach with the Syracuse women's lacrosse team and coaches the U.S. men's indoor team. And Reggie said in our conversations leading up into the season, Midge, that he wants to build this team just like those Rochester teams that won those titles. Yeah, he talked about the mix of American players, Canadian players, native players. That gives you different perspectives, different styles of play. And if they can complement each other, it's a dangerous mix. Inside the middle, looking for Matthews, and the errant shot is high in the crossbar. Now the opposite way, and a chance here for the New York Riptide again. Radzowicz was denied two chances in transition for Cody Radzowitz tonight, marked by two quickly, and there's the pressure by Jordy Jones-Smith, who gobbles the loose ball. 
And that's the one place you don't want to take the ball against this defense is down to the corners. They do such a nice job right before the break. We talked about that double team. They force the Riptide down to the corners, and then they send a man from the middle, daring you to throw it back straight over your head. You'll see the Riptide try that a few times. They have to be very precise with that over-the-head pass. Matthews was looking to Shetler again, but he lost it with that pass to the middle. And here come the New York Riptide down the right side. Andrew Suter, big spark for them on defense. He just had a son. Congrats to, to Andrew Suter. Had his first boy, Jet James Suter. So he'll be on the Riptide in about 15, 18 years, I think. Yeah, congratulations once again to the Suter family. And Andrew, of course, and his wife. On the right-hand side, it's Thor. And the shot is wide of Kirk's cage. Let's send it down to Danny with more on Suter. Danny. Yeah, guys, I talked to Suter before the game, and he said that mom and baby are doing really well. He said that baby baby Jet is getting five to six hours a night, and Andrew is also getting a couple hours as well. Mitch, you know a thing or two about losing some sleep with uh, some little guys? I do. 2017, my first year with the, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not my first year, my final year with the Georgia Swarm. I had my first son, George, so I think having a son on, uh, uh, you know, can be a good, a good, good luck charm. On the opposite way here from the New York Riptide, but what a stick check there by Connor Robinson of Saskatchewan. Loose ball here in front, kicked aside, and then Kirk has it for Saskatchewan. Scott Johnson there pushing the pace in transition. Those pushes in transition are what they need. They've done a nice job so far of pulling it out when it's not there. That was one that I maybe would have liked to see him feed that across. He had a teammate streaking off the bench. It's Shatler with the picks, Matthews with the shot, and Bouquet had it on the right pad. It's won here by New York that time, Dan McRae, but a costly turnover again in the middle of the floor to Corbeil. This is something that Coach Thorpe talked about, their pressure at the midline. That was just one player, Ryan Keenan doing a nice job. So they always keep one player back to put pressure on the Riptide defense and make that a challenge, make it not easy. McIntosh of the start just got enough was Chetner on the stick that time. Here's the long outlet. Jenner has it on the 2v1 momentarily. Numbers coming back for the rush defensively. And this is what the Riptide need. They need a full 30 second for their offense to get on, everyone to get a touch and to run their offense. They haven't had too many of these with the, the two penalties and the goals by the rush. Here's Lomas, has Kelly up top in the middle, and there's the turnover. Messenger has it across the center line. 2v1, Mike Messenger walking in. That's a good defensive play, Connor Kelly. Russell have it on a fresh 30 here for Saskatchewan, coming in at one and one. They played Colorado and New England so far. How about the New England Black Wolves off to a 3-0 start? Yeah, New England Black Wolves are, are probably the hottest team in the NLL right now. They've got Callum Crawford, who's on an absolute tear with 14 points last night. So look for them to make some noise. And, and, and frankly, the Black Wolves beat both of these teams. So right now, they're top of the class. 1,000 career points. For Caleb, congratulations to Crawford. 50 seconds to go in our first quarter. To the right here, Gail Thorpe, the product out of Ohio State. That cross crease pass to the shot. And Kirk's been so successful in quarter number one. Cornwall has it. Now for Saskatchewan. And the spacing for the rush that seems to be advantageous for the visitors here. Yeah, they've done a nice job of putting pressure on the ball here. And this is where I think the, the Riptide, if they can get back to that settled five-on-five -five offense, they started to find their flow on offense a little bit. And here we're going to have a hold, unfortunately, so they're going to be man down. And the call's coming up here against the captain, Dan McRae. He's going to go in the box at the tail end of our first quarter. Again, Bob Hollingsworth is the crew chief tonight. McRae won a title with Calgary, where he spent the last nine years with the Roughnecks. And this is where you do not want to put the Saskatchewan rushes on the power play. We saw how well Mark Matthews and Church can shoot. Now give them one less guy to go against, and, and it's even more dangerous. Saskatchewan was 0 for 1 on the power play, but it was the top power play unit last year. 10 seconds to go in our first quarter. Look out for Matthews on the left is Church. It's Matthews up top. Oh, we get inside Nakatosh looking for Church. Bouquet said no, and that will do it for the first quarter of play. And it's all Saskatchewan leading 4-0 at the end of one. Yeah, 4-0, not where they wanted to be, but at the same time, very surmountable. So they're in a position right now to make sure that they can come back. They've got the they've got the man up to kill, but other than that, they're in a great spot. 
Church got the scoring started, followed by the fourth overall pick, Garland. And then Matthews continued the scoring for the Saskatchewan Rush. The home opener for the New York Riptide continues after this. Watch all the action from around the National Lacrosse League this season on BR Live. Choose an annual, monthly, or per game pass. For more info, visit NLL dot com slash br live dave leno mitch belisle danny wetzelman our entire crew from the nycb live nassau veterans memorial coliseum 12 year box lacrosse has returned here after that hiatus here on long island and it's great to have mitch belisle on these broadcasts an nll champion from 2017 with the georgia swarm with your nine-year career i've also played in new york with the titans been an all-star champion mitch you bring this pedigree in here and it's great to have these broadcasts alongside you thanks dave it's a pleasure to be up here with you and great to watch some awesome lacrosse this sport has come so far the nll has come so far you're going to get an opportunity to talk to the commissioner at halftime so it's just it's just an exciting time to be involved with the NLL and with the Riptide at their home opener. It's, it's been a great start. Mitch, how much has the indoor game changed for those that are watching for the first time in a number of years? Well, if they're an old Saints fan, it's certainly changed a lot. The arena's changed, the game has changed, the name of the league changed from the mill to the NLL. But ultimately, you still got to put the ball into a little net in front of a big goalie. And so those are the things, just the, the level of play has improved because guys are committing so much more of their time to lacrosse and that's something that's great about this league is players still have other jobs but more and more guys are able to do this as a full-time occupation it's inside there and again it's denied by evan kirk let's go downstairs to danny wexelman yeah guys just a quick note john ranigan assistant captain was yelling at his guys right then and telling them to keep moving their feet that was the message that he had to them for this second quarter thank you very much danny with those Adjustments going into the second. Stands is still on the penalty kill here at the New York Riptide as McCray's in the box that went off the crossbar on the opposite end. One hustle by Rannigan. Matthews trying to get that loose ball. And instead, it's Evan Kirk drafted six overall in 2011 for Saskatchewan. Here's Keenan on the right hand side. Danny mentioned John Rannigan. That was him chomping his legs and continuing to fight against the big body of Mark Matthews to try to get to that ball. The right Saskatchewan looking for Shetler. The cross crease pass is in. It's Shetler again, and it's 5 nothing Saskatchewan. And we talked about wanting to stay out of the box, and that's just classic power play offense when it comes to the indoor game, trying to get that cross crease pass. You see, once that ball goes across, it's so difficult for any goalie to get from one pipe all the way to the other. So despite being large, these goals, you still got four feet, six inches to get across, and, and that's a tough transition to go from one side to the other. Um, so great work by Sask Saskatchewan, moving that ball side to side, and the Riptide need to make sure to get their sticks in the lanes to prevent that. See Reggie Thorpe, the head coach of the New York Riptide, trying to change, and Flip this script here, it's 5-0 Saskatchewan for the New York Riptide home opener. The faceoff won by Woodall, and over to Radzowitz. Chatler with his second goal this year. Radzowitz walking in, Kirk to his left has it. Possession salvaged here for the New York Riptide in their fresh 30. It's Kelly this time, met by Cornwell. There is the switch defensively for Saskatchewan on the right-hand side, Suter. That's blocked down in front by Dilks. Again, New York has it, though, in front. It's a good cross-check there on Travis Longboat for the New York Riptide and 23 on the shot clock. Travis Longboat has been one of those silent workhorses that they've relied on for their offense. He hasn't put up a ton of points, but he's really helped to get open shots for his teammates, and you need guys like that. Kelly getting a screen there. Digby this time using his positioning and Kirk again with another stop. And here comes Saskatchewan in transition up five goals. Cornwall again off the front door. The shot is in for Saskatchewan. Robert Church gets his second of the evening. And Dave, you look at these goals. 
there's only been one settled five-on-five -five goal. That was that was transition as they're subbing off. Just a great job of Church of coming, sprinting off the bench right down the middle, right down the gut. And when you give him time and space in the middle, he is going to bury the ball every time, just like he did in the first goal of the game. So limiting that transition, power play, shorthanded goal. If they can keep it to five-on-five -five lacrosse, they're going to be in a much better position. They need to take away these transition and, and these shorthanded and power play opportunities. You know, I want to talk with you about these transition moments and what stands out about Saskatchewan and the way they get numbers up the floor creating these 2v1 situations. I think it's just their speed and their hustle reacting so quickly to get to the bench, get guys on the floor, and knowing where to go once they get on the floor. And that takes a lot of time and chemistry, and they have that with all their years of playing together. Saskatchewan again on offense here was McIntosh on a hop drop there by Bouquet. Radzowitz again in transition on that right-hand side. Digby, the shot is high. It's Gibson, the number one pick. Cross-check there by Messenger, who has one goal this year for Saskatchewan. Keep an eye on 19, Tyson Gibson on that back post. Gibson has it in possession for the New York Riptide. Getting a pick there by Kelly. The shot by McArdle knocked down in front. Digby went up. And there's the shot clock violation back to the rush. Smart play by Connor Kelly. It might to the casual fan that said, why don't you just pick that up and throw it? But that's a smart play. Just dump it in the corner. You know the shot clock is about to go. You have a 30-second shot clock. And instead of taking a bad shot that maybe sparks transition the other way, he just dumps it deep and makes the rush have to get their entire offense on. That's a good pick there by Shatler on that 2v1, that give and go for Saskatchewan. A nice play with Keenan. Shatler getting it back. And the call coming up here against the rush. Back to the rip time. Nice job by Chetner to get that check in at the last second. Opposite way here for the New York Rip Tide. It's McCray. Captain of Battleford of the loose ball of it. Five players. Longboat also getting into it along with McCray. And the loose ball won here by Saskatchewan. Numbers the opposite way with Robinson. Defensively, Suter is there for the Rip Tide. Rubish. And we're going to get a call coming up here. It looks like Mitch against Saskatchewan. Yeah, and they're going to call him for holding the stick as they're subbing off. Sometimes you'll see a player jostle. You'll see the ref walk over. He's going to give that hold. I saw a holding call, and it looked like he motioned that he was holding the stick. <laughs> that will indeed be the call as Jeremy Thompson will go to the box for the second time this evening. Of the famed Thompson brothers with Jerome Miles and Lyle. That's the older brother, Jeremy. Three brothers on that Georgia team. How about the work that Georgia's done with the Thompson brothers, in particular Lyle Thompson. They are a special group in that, that 2017 championship. And there's the goal for Connor Kelly, the first one at home in New York Riptide history. It's 6-1. And these are what you need to latch on to. These momentum changes, these getting the crowd behind you. If you get a power play, need to score. And that's what Connor Kelly does. Just keep shooting, keep shooting, and finally it'll find the back of the net. Great work, a little seal there by Digby. Comes over the top of it and finds on the back corner. Power play goal for Kelly. It is his fifth goal this year, his second year in the National Lacrosse League. And that's what the New York Riptide need to do. They get on the board, Mitch, and then we've seen this team over the last three games for Reggie Thorpe go on these runs. Could we see it here again? Yeah, last night, New England went on a big run, but then New York was able to put together a run of their own. They need to do that. They need to keep chipping away, stop the bleeding, and get this to a 6-4, 6-3 game going into half to feel really good about the effort they're putting forth and being able to come back in that second half and their legs start getting tired from the double header. Let's see how the rush respond with Matthews going inside, looking for Shetler, and he has his second goal tonight. Jeff Shetler, courtesy of Mark Matthews. Chandler's having a heck of a night. He assisted three of the first four goals, has scored two of the last three. He's putting himself in a great position to support his teammates. You see him set a little pick, slip between it, and then just finds that soft spot and hangs out there. The poise that all these players have inside with their toes on the crease, the ability to find that open lane and pop that ball in. Just an unbelievable job taking his time as he absorbs a check 
But that's a riptide defense. That's a carbon copy, Mitch, of what you've been dissecting. Those 2v1s, those give and go plays. We're talking about so many set plays with the Saskatchewan team, and that a lot of these players have played with one another for the last five years. Yeah, they diagram so many little plays and variations of the plays. They're able to pick apart what works. Jeff Shatler and Mark Matthews, they are over there on the what we call the two man side. Um, so it, you'll notice in lacrosse, field lacrosse, players play all over the field. In box lacrosse, your lefties traditionally stay on the left side of the floor with your righties on the right side of the floor. So when I say strong right, that means there's three right-handed players. Strong left, you can see there's two left-handed players working together. And it's Church this time going short pipe that time, and it will go into the netting. It will take us to a timeout. 9.28 remaining in our first half. Saskatchewan leading 7-1, but good news for the New York Riptide is Connor Kelly getting on the board for the hometown New York team. For Kelly, it is his fifth goal this year, but New York is down by six goals here at the Coliseum. I've got Rush head coach Derek Keenan. Coach, your team is currently playing the role of spoiler, and your transition game is getting the best of the tide right now. Was that part of your game plan coming into tonight? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, you know, we know they played last night, and they'd have a little bit of heavy legs, especially if we could jump on them early. And so far, we've done a pretty good job of that, and executing pretty well on our five-on-five five as well. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Guys? And thank you very much, Danny. How about this, Mitch? Saskatchewan only scored eight goals in their last game against New England on the 14th already. They have seven goals early in the second. Yeah, we talked about Coach Keenan mentioned getting back to the fundamentals, the basics. This is what he was talking about. However, it wasn't just the, the five on five goals. They're scoring in transition. They're scoring a, a bevy of different ways. So it, it's got to be good for him to see his offense kind of getting back in their mode. It's Keenan on the right-hand side, dodging around Johnston that time. McCray for the loose ball off of Bob Barry. The loose ball scooped up by Matthews. The rush still have it in the behind-the-back shot. is steered aside by Bouquet. Those diving plays that McCray's making, that's the kind of thing that's going to spark your team. That's why he's the captain, making those little plays even down by six goals. They need those little plays to start adding up and then to capitalize when they have the opportunities in the offensive end. Here's Kelly now in the middle, and that's why Kelly has the goal. Thompson has it here. We'll give it up, though. Garland with the shot, and that goes into the netting for Saskatchewan. Stay up to date on all the news, announcements, and exclusive prizes with the NLL newsletter. Sign up now at NLL.com. Calgary 2-1 and one in the West, leading the West Division just ahead of Saskatchewan, but a four-way tie for second. On the North Division, Halifax is off to a 2-0 and o start, Buffalo at 1-0. Remember, there's five games, including this one, in action tonight. I just saw Halifax score. They're up 10-4, so well on their way to a third win here. But you never know in this league. Anything can happen. Side for Shatler was looking for the hat trick tonight. And that transition not executed well as they were searching for Fournier for New York. And Dave, that's the third time they've had more or less a breakaway if they could make that pass and they just haven't been able to connect on that. That could be a result of, of the second game. It's Matthews behind the cage of Bouquet, serving his options behind the back Bouquet. Wasn't fooled that time. Just to finish up the divisions on the east side, it's New England 3-0. The Georgia Swarm at 2-0, undefeated so far. What a, what a weekend if you're an L NLL fan. Every team seeing action. So many games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Just a great weekend to be a lacrosse fan. On the right-hand side, Thorpe moves the screen. It's Gibson and Kirk. Has it for Saskatchewan. And Ryan Keenan, you see he played a defensive shift and then sprinted down. The reason he did that was to bring Gibson down, to force Gibson to play some defense. In this, in this game, you do a lot of subbing. You try to get your D guys on versus your O guys. So getting Gibson, Gibson caught at the D end is good, both because he's not as used to playing defense and also it tires him out. Robinson and Bouquet just got a piece of that for New York. 
the corner board there, and a big hit made by Saskatchewan. Scott Robinson, a knockdown Suter. And that was Suter. I cannot believe that wasn't a high hit call. And he's given, he's given the ref the same thing. That was two hands right up in the face. That, that could have even been a, a major penalty there. Gibson still on the floor here for the Riptide. It's Longboat now on that right-hand side. The Cardinal getting the pick for New York with the shot right at Kirk. Digby tried to scoop up the lost ball, and Corbeil has it for Saskatchewan. Numbers the opposite way with Garland. Here's the number four overall pick out of Canisius. Players running outside into the front door, onto the floor this time. Shatler behind the back, it's Matthews. On that left-hand side now for the rush. Rannigan on the defensive side, and the shot is in for Matthew Disdale. It's his first goal this year for Saskatchewan. It's 8-1 rush. And Marty Dinsdale with a little bit of a rocker step there. Does a nice job of catching his defenseman a little over aggressive. You'll see he rocks back onto his heels, gets Rannigan thinking he's got a pick coming on his left-hand side, keeps running around that, and takes that shot on the run. Just a nice job of feeling that pressure and adjusting to it. He's in his fifth year with Saskatchewan. He has recorded back-to-back -back 20 goal seasons. Also spent time with Calgary 2013-15. But last year was a monstrous year for Disdale. Coach Derek Keenan has to be pleased with the start so far in this first half on the road. And after a two-week break from game action, up 8-1 of the rush again. It's a Robert Schuch shot, and Bouquet has it. Now, if you're a guy like Alex Bouquet, and you see the seven-goal deficit, what's going through the mind of the goaltender for New York? They, they have to just forget about it and play his game. Oh, wow, what a finish there. The shot is in on the opposite end. It's Tyler Digby and gets the second goal for the New York Riptide, the third goal of the year. Fifth goal for Tyler Digby for the 2019 and 2020 season. And what a finish there. Digby just flying off the bench, catches that. I almost thought, man, he's going to run out of room here and just shovels it underhand. I don't know where that beat Kirk, but it just slipped either between his legs or, or over his hip. But I thought he was running out of room. What a play there to, to find a little space there and, and sneak that one in. Those are the little plays. If they can start to piece together those garbage goals, those, I guess that wasn't garbage goal, it was a beautiful goal. But, you know, those, those cheap goals coming out of transition, those are what will let them chip away and get back into this game. So that negates a 2 nothing run by Saskatchewan on the road. But how about the start this year for Digby? Five goals a season, assistant captain for the New York Riptide. And Reggie Thorpe has to be pleased with his performance. Suter again, almost another chance inside the crease, though, will come out for Saskatchewan. But back to what Digby's doing. Again. Yeah, they're relying on him a lot. He's a big body. We saw a nice goal from him that stopped the bleeding against New England last night, tiptoeing the crease. He's got to use that size, use that strength to get both himself and his teammates open. Matthews on the right this time. Matthews again on short side. Bouquet was there. Bob Perry with the defensive work, another big hit. Still in the possession of McIntosh, getting the shot off and well walked. And it will be a shot clock violation on Saskatchewan. Do you feel like the defense started to settle down here, Mitch? I was just going to say, good physical defense. They're fighting through the picks. They're meeting pressure with pressure. You saw that big hit on Mark Matthews. You have to chip away at those guys to tire them out and make it difficult for them to get to the spots they like to shoot from. Cross floor pass. It's Kelly this time navigating towards the middle on the right. Thorpe met by two. Dan Lomas behind the back. Loose ball. Who wants it? It's Corbeil. Saskatchewan with numbers the opposite way. Thompson walking in on Bouquet, and it's off the pine. And there's that pressure from the rush, and now this is that retransition. So they got a four on three opportunity. Can they capitalize? Let's see it here at the top of the crease. They were looking inside for Suter. New York still in possession. There's the loose ball. Those beautiful checks right behind the goal of Kirk. It was Checker who almost had it for the New York Riptide, and instead it's Rubish and company for Saskatchewan. Both teams taking a deep breath here after an up and down and up and down. You can see both guys, or both sides, are getting a little bit gassed. McIntosh and Disdale setting the screens on the inside now. Towards the right, the cross grace pass, and Bouquet said no, along with the pipe, and that will take us to another timeout.
action-packed home opener here at the New York Riptide. 3.15 to go in our first half. 8-2 Saskatchewan, but the first goal here in the home opener belongs to Connor Kelly. Five goals of the season. The Riptide are down by six. Coming up on NLL at the half, Devin Caney sat down with face-off star Trevor Baptiste to find out what drives his game on an on and off the floor. Highlights and analysis of the first half with Mitch and I and a look around the league, all coming up at the break. Plus, we'll be joined by NLL Commissioner Nick Sakevich to talk what brings NLL back to New York, plus expansion, much more. Stay tuned for my one-on-one -on -one conversation with Commissioner Sakevich coming up at halftime. Here's Matthews and company out of the timeout here. And how about the Riptide getting their second goal thanks to Digby? Yeah, the Riptide, their man down here, but a little bit of an opportunity here in transition. It's Fournier and a sprawling save by Kerr. Keenan has it for Saskatchewan. John Rannigan was flagged for, I'm sorry, was penalized. Not, no flags in the indoor game. Was penalized for a slash off ball. And they just haven't been able to get the breaks when it comes to the stat sheet in terms of power play and, and man down. So they're going to fight through this. They're getting plenty of opportunity to work on their penalty kill, that's for sure. On that left-hand side, and there's the dunk opportunity to no avail. McIntosh had a piece. Bombberry as New York tries to get going in transition. Radzowitz up ahead, met by one, and getting some numbers on the change here for New York. Digby has it for the rip top. Huge save by Bouquet with a little dive attempt from behind. He just stuck his big paw up there and knocked that out with his hand. The casual observer might have looked like an easy save, but that was an unbelievable save there. On the penalty quill, it's Digby looking for a second, and Kirk says no. Does the ball cross the line? And the official says no. It did not. And Digby, he's saying yes. We'll be curious to see if he signals to Reggie whether, whether to throw that red challenge flag. And we get it right on cue. Head coach Reggie Thorpe has thrown the red flag and it will be a challenge for the New York Riptide as Digby thought that one did indeed cross the line. And the crew chief tonight is Bob Hollingsworth. And again, the entirety of the ball has to cross the line. And Hollingsworth will go into the official box and look over the replay. But it speaks to what Digby can bring to the floor. The Robert Morris product picked up in the expansion draft in the ninth round last year was with New England, and this is a guy, Mitch, who had 27 goals. Let's take another look. What do you think here with Digby, Mitch? So his feet stayed out. Now the question is, did the ball cross before all the way, and did it cross before his feet went in the crease? So you're allowed to go in the crease as long as you get out before the ball crosses. So this is interesting. There's two things here. One, does the ball get all the way across the line? Two, does it get across the line while he's no longer in the crease? Because he does take a step through the crease after he shoots it. So if the ball crosses, when he's in the crease, it's no goal. If it doesn't cross, it's no goal. But if he gets out of the crease, then it rolls in, that's a good goal. Great job of finding that empty space. He's not in the crease. He steps on the crease there. Is the ball in after that? That's the question. We need an overhead angle or even a backside angle to see when did that ball cross the line and did it go all the way over? We do see the official was giving the resetting of the shot clock signal there. So saying it was no goal the whole way. And you're right on it. No foot in the crease. That's first and foremost. Kirk looking for it on that angle right there. It looks like the ball's across, but we need that overhead angle. Right, so you can see the ball crossed. A majority of the ball crossed. Was it all the way over? And, and had he gotten out of the crease? So it's pretty tough to tell from that angle. You can see Digby thinks it's in. Because they called it no goal on the field, I worry it's not going to be enough evidence to overturn it. All right, that's important that the call on the floor was no goal by Bob Hollingsworth's crew. And it really is a big call. It could be a potential back-to-back -back goals for Tyler Digby. Again, it would be a shorthanded goal. Hollingsworth coming out and will give the call to the crowd at the Coliseum. On further review, the shooter stepped in the crease before the ball crossed the line. It's going to be no goal, no goal foot in the crease. So the ball did cross the line. Mitch, you and I, when looking over the replay, thought that the foot was outside. It wouldn't be. 
a call on that end, but instead, foot in the crease, negated. So his second step, his second step, you see, he's not in the crease here, but his second step right there is in the crease. However, if they're saying the ball went in, he continued out of the crease, so it should have stayed in the goal over the line. You can see there's frustration on the side of the bench for that same reason. If, as long as you get out of the, as long as you get out of the crease, if the ball is in the net, it's in the net. So once you get out, it should be good. So the New York Riptide and Digby will have to continue the penalty kill. 40 seconds left on the man up in the power play for Saskatchewan. Matthews and company in possession behind the back, and the shot is in. Boy, do they answer on that left-hand side with Church. He has a hat trick tonight, and Saskatchewan now leads 9-2 in the game. They have to stay out of the box, Dave. You can see just how dangerous Saskatchewan is when they have it a numbers advantage both in transition and with a settled power play. They just move the ball so quickly, a little behind the back to a quick pass, to a quick shot. It's just so difficult for Bouquet to get from one side of the crease all the way to the other side of the crease. And when you pick corners like that, it's, it's near impossible. Mitch, how impressed have you been just with the passing, just through the lanes for Saskatchewan tonight? Well, it's, it's, that's what five years as a team together and gelling. That, that, that flow, that chemistry, that builds. Rubish. Shot is wide by Disney. will come out here for the New York Riptide. New Bay's team down by seven. Radzowitz with 120 to go in our second quarter. The fans are expecting a big year out of Tyson Gibson from Maple, Ontario, the first overall pick in the draft. Played against his dad last night up at New England, and the cross form class is wide. Kirk comes out, didn't have it instead. It's Kelly with the dunk opportunity, and Kirk read it beautifully. Kelly with an interesting short side dunk opportunity. You don't see that. Usually you try to wrap around and put that on your backhand. Nice job trying to sneak it short side, but good work taking care of that by Kirk. Shot by distance of Church is read perfectly there by Bouquet in a fresh 30 here for the rip top. About a 15 second game and shot clock differential here on the floor to culminate our first half. It's Longboat now for New York. Kelly went to the far side there, not of the same frequency, and the loose ball was momentarily won there by Rubish of Saskatchewan. He's going to bet it, get it back here on a 2v2. And just a suspected smart timeout call there by Saskatchewan. They have 25 seconds left, meaning the shot clock will be off. They have 25 seconds to draw something up. They'll probably run it down to about the 10 to 12 second mark and try to get the last shot of the half. On February 1st, the San Diego Seals are making history and hosting the Colorado Mammoth for the first NLL game to be played in Las Vegas. For more information, visit sealslax.com slash Vegas. You know, we talk so much about expansion with the New York Riptide, but how about the job by San Diego coming as an expansion team last year and the product that they put out there on the floor? One of the New York Riptide players played for San Diego, Connor Kelly. He had a great year last year, seven goals. Yeah, they've seen how it can happen with an expansion team. You can string together some big wins. So they set the mold, and now they're doing some exciting things with their game in Vegas. They're playing the game on the airstrip. So there's some really cool things that they've done, setting that bar even higher for the NLL, which is what's so exciting. Putting teams in new places, setting the bar higher, great ownership groups with Joe Tsai of, of Alibaba fame. And it's just so many great things are happening in the league. You'll get an awesome chance to talk to with the commissioner at halftime, but it's a great time to be involved in lacrosse, specifically with the NLL. Yeah, for Kelly, seven games played with San Diego last year, nine goals, eight assists, also part of the U.S. men's indoor team coached by Reggie Thorpe, and Coach Thorpe has coached a multitude of players across the league with the U.S. indoor team, including the New York team. Yeah, it's an awesome opportunity for American players to start seeing that higher level of play and, and for Reggie to start building those relationships across all the different teams. So he got a good look at all the different American players as he coached that team, and they headed into the expansion draft and was able to pick some of his favorites. We're in the midst of a timeout if you're wondering why there's a stoppage in play here. Officials are conferring with the official score, the crew chief Bob Hollingsworth. A little over 25 seconds to go in our second quarter. They're looking at time on the shot clock, we're being told. Remember, it's a 30-second shot clock. It's 
Mitch and I have noted that it didn't look like there was anything on there, and that's why Saskatchewan took the timeout, but it looks like there will be a 1.8 second difference between game and shot clock now. And so the Rush don't have a goalie, and they have six offensive players in. So if they take the shot too early, that gives the Riptide a chance at shooting the long ball and trying to get it in the empty net. So they're going to wait till the last 10 seconds or so to run this set play and try to get a shot off with two to three seconds left to go. Matthews, on the right-hand side, has Keenan. Three on the shot clock. Here comes Saskatchewan with Matthews' shot deflected in front. And the shot clock violation will sound. We may get less than a second to go before half unless the officials just blow it dead if the players are walking off here. So it looks like that will culminate our first half. Saskatchewan will go into the locker room leading 9-2. Yeah, the Riptide seeing that they can score, being able to do that on the power play, being able to do that um, in transition. Now they need their five on five game to come alive. So they've gotten good looks. That's the good news. They've gotten good looks. They've gotten good good opportunities. They just haven't been able to find the net. And that's a lot of credit to Evan Kirk, who's played a really nice game between the pipes. They're, they're going to put 1.8 seconds left on the clock, Mitch. This is what we were describing at the end of the half here. So they're going to have to play out the last 1.8 seconds with that game and shot clock differential. Officials adjudicating this one properly. Calling the players back uh, when they were walking to the locker rooms. Captain Cray, here uh, Riptide, speaking with one of the officials there. And I'm wondering if New York called a timeout as soon as they picked that ball up, because the clock shouldn't have stopped otherwise, unless the ball went out of play, which I, I don't recall if it, after that shot it went out of play. It may have hit the netting, and maybe that's why it stopped the clock. So Rannigan is there against Corbeil, the captain for Saskatchewan. Kirk was all the way in the locker room, so called out, have to hustle back on the opposite side of the floor. Are the knee pads buckled there, Mitch? He, he likes to wear a loose, <laughs> loose knee pad there, so he'll just fire one down there, hope for the best. And that will do it for our first half. And what a first 30 minutes for Evan Kirk and the Saskatchewan Rush as they'll go into the locker room leading by seven goals against the New York Riptide. They got off to a 6-0 start in tonight's game. Let's go downstairs to Danny Wexelman with Mark Matthews. Danny. Thanks, guys. Mark, uh, your team's off to a blazing start right now. And I'm just wondering, as you go into the half, how do you maintain the energy and this momentum that you have? Yeah, we've been struggling for two weeks to, you know, to score and get good looks on offense. And tonight we're, uh, you know, we're getting good looks and canning our shots. So we just have to, you know, keep things rolling and, and don't give up. I'm just wondering, uh, I know everyone's got a part of their game they can improve. Nothing, no lead is safe in box lacrosse. So what adjustments can you guys make coming into the second half? Yeah, I mean, Honestly, just playing the way we're playing. Our D is playing very well, and Kirky's playing well, and just keep, uh, you know, keep doing what we're doing, and and, and can our shots when we get them. Mark, thank you. No problem. Guys, back to you. Danny, thank you very much. A terrific start for Saskatchewan tonight. It's the home opener, though, for the New York Riptide, and for the Riptide, Connor Kelly and Tyler Digby getting on the board. But after the first 30 minutes, it's 9-2. Saskatchewan NLL at the half is coming up next. Welcome to NLL at the half, and it's halftime here on Long Island. Saskatchewan leads New York 9-2, the home opener for the expansion side, New York Riptide. Tonight, Trevor Baptiste of the Philadelphia Wings take on the reigning champion, Calgary Roughnecks, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Only in his second year in the league, Baptiste is already one of the most well-known pro lacrosse players, and boys, he graded face-offs. Tyler Baptiste spoke with our very own Devin Caney and what drives his game on and off the floor. All good? Are you good? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. All right. Hold on, I'm not ready. Okay, I'm ready. This is just like... This, it's just like, it's just you and me. We are out here. We're in the club. Okay. Good there? Okay. Go Wigs. Do you say crayon or crayon? Macho or mocha? <laughs> <laughs> Need to like prepare yourself? Yes. Well, I, I feel like in like prepping for 
interviews, I usually try to talk to them about things that don't involve lacrosse okay. or what they do off the floor yeah. or a hobby. With you, I feel like everything I know about you and most people know about you is about lacrosse. Yeah, yeah, you, you're right. So what can you tell me about yourself? Like, like, what do you enjoy doing that doesn't involve lacrosse? That's a good question. You know, I think uh, we actually were talking about it yesterday on a podcast and, and they were saying, you know, like, you guys identify so much with lacrosse, you know, and I, I like sat there and thought about it for a second. I was like, yeah, you know, like I should probably uh, maybe do some other things with my life. No, but, um, what is something that people might not know about you that you wish they did or, or wish people identified with you? Ooh. So is that like a, like you want like a really deep answer or you want something? I want like whatever that? answer you want to give. You know, obviously lacrosse has, has done so much for me and uh, has taken me a lot of great places and has been my occupation for the past year, my sole occupation. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see lacrosse grow more and be a little bit more diverse. Uh, it's something that, that's, that I've always cared about and, uh, and something that, that I'm striving to do more. You know, I'm going to harm lacrosse right after this and uh, I just like to see back the up. game grow. And then you back out. Don't move. Ready? Set. Go. And, and be in all different types of areas of the world. You know, I think uh, it, it's becoming more accessible. I think it's it's like that. It's it's still pretty hard. There's still some barriers to entry, but uh, you know, I think with a lot of brands and and uh, and leagues and, and people, it's becoming more accessible to to all types of players and, and people and races, which I'm really excited to, to be a part of and hoping that uh, I can help that out as well. Affects them more than it affects you, right? Once you, you ever, uh, you guys ever get like tickled or something? Yes. Like someone like tickles, attacks you? They're like, ah, they tickle you, right? But like if someone tries to tickle you and you just don't laugh, they usually just stop, right? Most importantly, I'm, I just wanna go out and have fun with them and, and really show them that, uh, the cross is a great opportunity. You know, it's a great opportunity to, to go to college or, or even just do something extracurricular, make good friendships, great relationships that last a while, yeah, and, and to be out. healthy. Yeah, keep my elbows inside my knees. Inside my knees. Like Enjoy I said right for the fifth time, have fun, you know, because that's what I'm all about. I'm all about having fun, especially on the floor or the field and, or when I'm coaching or something like that. If you're not having fun, there's really no reason to, to be doing it, to be doing it. And we're back here at NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum at halftime. Saskatchewan leads New York 9-2. We're pleased to be joined by the NLL Commissioner, Nick Sakevich. Nick, thanks for joining us, and welcome back to the Coliseum. Uh, it's great to be here. I played here, actually, once a very long time ago, so it's great to be back in New York. What has the process been like for bringing a team back into the New York market for the league? Uh, it's been a few years. Uh, you had to, we had to find the right owners. We had to get the, the, the right arena set in place. Of course, they did an amazing renovation of this place, so it's a perfect size for the NLL. We had three owners that were actually bidding for this franchise, and we finally awarded it about a little over a year ago to uh, GF Capital, Gary Furman, Eric Baker, and uh, GF Sports, a uh, fantastic ownership group. We're really excited to be back here. Long Island is such a hotbed for lacrosse. How have you measured the audience, not just in attendance today, but watching at home, and how does it extend beyond those that know the box lacrosse game? Well, it's got a great long history. In fact, right now at halftime, there there's about 50 guys on the floor that all used to play here for the teams that have played over the decades in the area. It's got such a rich history of lacrosse, and. And on top of that, uh, the Long Island market is hungry for great entertainment. And if you've ever seen a National Lacrosse League game, it is just spectacular entertainment. This league has grown exponentially since you have been the commissioner appointed in 2016. How do you measure that growth with you and your staff? 
Well, you know, we have a long way to go. We were nine teams when, when we came in here, and we're at, uh, 13 teams now. We're on the cusp of announcing our 14th team. Um, we see a trajectory to 30 teams over the next 10, 15 years or so, but we're doing it with really good owners, blue chip owners, great arenas, and in strong markets, and we're being very careful and strategic. Learned a lot of lessons in my 21 years in MLS about expansion, uh, thanks to my good friend Don Garber and, and the crew there. Uh, and it's been, uh, it's been fun here. I'm having a lot of fun in this league. You talked about expansion. What can fans expect within the next three to five years with this league in terms of adding some new teams? Yeah, so by 2023, we'll be 16 teams. Uh, at that point, I think we're going to take a relook at the conference alignments and set up the conferences accordingly. And then we're going to really take a strategic run uh, to 30 teams over the next decade or so. So the magic, a little bit of a magic number for us is 16. We want to get to four conferences, you know, create a great uh, geographic footprint across America as well as Canada. We've introduced our fifth Canadian market this year in Halifax. We think there's another three or four teams in Canada alone. And then uh, we're just going to continue to grow as the grassroots are, are growing. There's, there's so many kids picking up lacrosse sticks now because their moms and dads aren't letting them play other sports, and it's, uh, it, it's a bit of the wind in our sail for this sport. Nick, thanks so much for your time, and thank you for bringing lacrosse back here to no, Long Island. Thanks, Dave. It's great to be on MSG, and we're really excited. That's NLL Commissioner Nick Sakevich on the other side. Well, first half highlights and stats. Saskatchewan is leading New York 9-2 at the break. Start of the second half here at NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, and it's the home opener for the New York Riptide. They're down by seven goals to the rush. Dave Little, Mitch Belial, Danny Wexelman, our entire crew on BR Live and MSG2. As far as second half adjustments, what do you want to see, Mitch, out of this New York team going into the third quarter? I think I want to see them keep shooting. I think they're waiting for that perfect shot for when they've fired the ball at the goal, they've been able to generate some opportunities. Kirk has made some huge saves. I think if they keep chipping away, keep firing like they were last night against New England, they started just shooting the ball from those mid-range shots and things were falling. The face-off draw, and it's won there by the New York Riptide momentarily as Thompson and Woodall were dueling for it. Shatler had it for a moment, the stick touch, and Rubish will gobble it up here for the rush. Evan Kirk has done a great job through one half of play. 31-19 in favor of Saskatchewan. And that'll be an over and back. Nice job putting a little pressure on. Tough pass. And these are the advantages. they got to take, take every opportunity to get good looks at, on the cage. Here's Chetner in the early going of this third quarter. The first offensive possession for the Riptide. Early chance for Lomas, and it hit the pipe. And that one, the way that bounced down, I would love to see another look at it. That might have been behind the line there. The way that bounced out, it looked like it had a ton of backspin on it. Great job by Chetner taking his time. Just need to find the back end out on those opportunities when they have those open looks. Matthew Disdale is also on the floor on the left-hand side for Saskatchewan. And his first goal of the year tonight, Church had a hat trick through one half of play. Shatler has two goals this evening. And Dave, they've got the stats up on the board here at, at the Coliseum. And, and it's not crazy, it's not crazy. The big difference is, that the rush have been able to capitalize on all their chances. They've taken more shots on cage. So if the Riptide can keep pouring it on and hitting the goal, they're going to have some good opportunities here. You've talked that the 5-1-5 even strength opportunities have looked good for New York despite the disparity in goals. Slow was the shot, and that's turned aside by Kirk. Yeah, this is where they're starting to get the rush to make some mistakes. That over and back in the midline knocking the ball back into their goalie, which you're not allowed to push the ball back in your own crease. Those are the plays they need to start winning back these second chance opportunities so they can get better looks on the cage and also wear down the rush defense. There's Lomas around Hasek that time. Dan Lomas, the deflected shot, and Kirk wasn't full. And that's something that the rush does so well, is they knock down passes and they pick off passes. On the opposite side here at Shatler, spinning around at a 360 loose ball. John Wagner has it out of St. David's, Ontario. Second team and first team all Biggies player out of Marquette. On the opposite side here, Johnston walking in. It was a good check in front on the defensive play for Saskatchewan. And they're going to get a 
reward of a power play. So this is where they need to really make the most of these situations. They do a good job of pressuring, and Wagner just gets blasted, and then they get Johnson gets pulled down. So I'm not sure who they actually got. They, they, they hit Wagner from behind after he fed it, and then they pulled down Johnston. So I think they got one of those two. And then the ref landed on top of one of the rush players. So either way, this power play is going to be crucial for the Riptide. So Garland into the box here for the rush. The power play here for the New York Riptide. Chetner and Digby out there. Picks coming in the middle by Gibson. Digby in possession. Here's the dunk opportunity. Longbow trying to get the loose ball to no avail. And Rubish collects for Saskatchewan in transition and numbers the opposite way. Robinson again, and Bouquet says no. One thirty on this man up in the power play for New York. John Luke Jetner now. Digby. It's a goal tonight along with Kelly. And it's Kelly getting that screen from Digby. It's Jetner behind the goal. This is a good play looking for Gibson. That was high. Loose ball here. Digby going to the corner with Corbeil, the captain for Saskatchewan. And the shot clock violation there on New York. And they try to draw all the attention to behind the net and then feed back in front, which worked. They just weren't able to get off a clean shot. The Riptide, or I'm sorry, the Rush are doing a great job of getting their sticks and lanes and making it difficult for uncontested shots from, from right in front of the cage. You know, also, when you review the tape on the Rush, you can see that their press, Mitch, and how they get defenders all the way towards the center line, immediate pressure by Saskatchewan, and they're doing that tonight as well. Yeah, they do it both in the corners of their own zone and at that midline, as you mentioned, and that's a lot to handle as you're substituting or as you're driving down into those corners where you can get trapped. So they're very strategic about those double teams, and they do a nice job of putting teams in positions where they just don't feel comfortable with the ball in their stick. Digby with Chetner behind the back, looking for Lomas. Lomas walking in. It goes off the pipe that time. Fresh shot clock, Digby that time. Digby with the adjustment, and Digby has his second of the evening. Digby hates scoring goals without it hitting the goalie. Pops that one off of Kirk, and it trickles in. A little fireworks here in the Coliseum, getting the crowd into it. Literal fireworks. How about the adjustment, though, Mitch, as he's walking towards the crease and the cage from Tyler Digby? Just how arduous is that for a forward? Well, he's such a big body. That's what he's so good at is he tucks that across his face, and then he's able to put that over Kirk. It hits Kirk's shoulder and trickles in. That's the power that he brings. He actually was drafted to the CFL, the Canadian Football League, as a tight end. So he uses that tight end mentality to, to get himself to the cage, but he has those soft hands to be able to find those looks. On the opposite side, it's Thompson. It's 1v1 with Bouquet. Garland out of the box now. But Thompson, he's more of a transition player, and he's been stuffed a couple times on breakaways. He's hit a pipe, hit a pipe. Bouquet with a save there, so they've gotten away with a few there. Church back on the floor for the rush as well. We'll get it on cue around Radowitz that time behind the back, and Bouquet will have it. Let's see the outlet from Alex here. That time on the near side to Johnston up the floor. On the right now, Wagner, the Marquette product. And Johnston, Johnston traditionally has played forward back in his days with Toronto, and now he's playing more of a defensive transition role here with the Riptide. So maybe looking to spark a little bit of that D to O transition offense and then getting off and letting the offense do the work once they get the settled look. Let's look at for Gail Thorpe. He had two goals and three assists. He has the ball here to the left corner this time. They were going inside for Kelly. That was behind him and a shot clock violation on the rush. Yeah, they're trying to feed the ball inside. It's just not connecting right now. If they can get those looks, they'll have a lot better angle at the net, get Kirk moving side to side. But for now, they haven't been able to connect on those cross crease passes. McIntosh got tripped up momentarily. Robinson was hit, but he still has possession here for Saskatchewan. We'll see Kirk head to the bench. They got a delayed penalty. In these situations with these long possessions, it's typically a hold off ball. Robinson was looking inside again for Disdale, and we'll get the call, and it will be a hold of the stick coming up here. It looks like against New York, and that will take us to a timeout. First, let's check up on the call, though. Tough 
Holding the stick is going to be the call. And Fournier will go to the box for the New York Riptide. Well, 9.31 remaining in our third quarter, and Tyler Digby trying to get the New York Riptide back into it for the home opener at the Coliseum. They're down six goals. Come on back on MSG2. Can we set it up right here? And around the NLL, congratulations to Calgary's Curtis Dixon for his 400th career goal, the 14th player ever to do so, the five-time All-Pro second team player and 2011 Rookie of the Year. Yeah, Dixon, just such a dynamic player. Superman is his nickname. He loves that dive across the crease, does such a nice job of getting to his spots and, and diving and uses that body. He's got such athleticism. Power play here for Saskatchewan here, and Bouquet said no on the opposite side. So here's Rannigan. It's a back-to-back -back for the New York Riptide. They lost last night at New England. And speaking of Calgary and around the league, they're hosting the Philadelphia Wings tonight. But last night, they were playing San Diego. What goes into that travel? They were saying they were getting in two hours before the game, if everything goes according to plan. So that's really cutting it close. Without private private jets here, you're relying on the airlines, hoping for the best there. Longboat was looking inside for Thorpe. There's the shot clock violation, and play will continue for Corbeil. Over to Thompson now, and the change for Derek Keenan's team in the rush. Looking to improve to two and one on the young season here. Church back out onto the floor along with Matthews. And it's Church this time. Matthews now getting the screen in front. Church spinning to his left, looking for that cross crease dive to no avail. Three on two here for the rim tide, and a big run here for Kelly got tripped up. Kirk made the stop, no call from the officials. Nice effort, great job getting to the box by the defense, and then Kelly sparking transition coming out with speed. And it's Church this time, Bouquet read it perfectly. End to end action here. Yeah, and if they can kill this penalty off, this would be huge. They they need something to spark momentum, and this could be the perfect answer for what ails them. 25 seconds left on the man up here with Fournier in the box for New York on the penalty kill. It's McCardo on the right-hand side, gets the screen by Kelly in the shot. Evan Kirk gobbles it up for the rush. Hasek, look at the pace by Saskatchewan on the road, up the floor with McIntosh. Just how quick, Mitch, that they get to their offensive sets. Inside that cross for his pass, looking for Church. He wasn't ready for it. Six to go on the shot clock. Robinson on the right-hand side. Keenan was well wide. And a shot clock violation here on Saskatchewan. Yeah, and the Riptide, unfortunately, are going back to the box. Looks like they're going to call Suter, who caught Robinson up high. Robinson was down and stayed down. So it just seems like the Riptide can't catch a break here as they keep going to the box against this deadly offense. And they call it a roughing, so he gets away with just a two-minute penalty there. You see Suter, oh, you know what? That's just kind of a, a collision as Fournier pushes him into Suter, and Suter follows through. So just an unfortunate play there. Rush two for three on power plays tonight. Here's Matthews behind the back, looking for Keenan. Matthews again. I have a crossbar of Bouquet. Dave, the good news is the only one they didn't score was the most recent one, so they've got the recency going. Here's Rannigan trying to go for the shorthanded goal, and Kirk says no. Picked up by Corbeil. Church now. To the left, we'll get it back on the return, and that was high for his intended target, Corbeil, up the floor. He's going to come off with the change. The rip Loose ball, and Radigan almost had it. Riptide put great pressure on the, on the rush, making it difficult. It bounces right to Keenan, though. Keenan to the right, easy chance there for Shatler, and it's wide. McIntosh still has it behind the back. Shatler again, off the pipe. Bouquet's been huge on the penalty kill. Bouquet has been huge as half. He is he is looking like his confidence is at an all-time high right now. Lomas around Rubish, looking for that pass up ahead. It's Digby got it on the bounce, and it caroms off of Rubish back the opposite way with the rush. 
48 seconds to go in the power play with Robinson. And that was almost an accidental perfect pass off the boards. He was looking for the dunk and it bounced off the boards right to Digby. McIntosh getting set on the left-hand side for the box defensively for New York. They go left again, McIntosh. Church tried to pick up the loose ball. Who wants it? New York seems to get it here. Radzowicz on the 2v1. Radzowicz with the dive there, denied again by Kirk. And you can see the Riptide are just gas. They've gone up and down and up and down. But the good news is they killed another penalty. Oh, I'm sorry. They're, they're eight seconds away from killing another penalty. See if they can accomplish that feat here. And those are the dangerous times in the last five to ten seconds, right as you're getting the fan even strength. That those can sometimes be times where you sit back on your heels or as you're waiting for that fifth player to come back in where a lot of goals get scored. That's a great point, Mitch. How do the players adjust with their positioning defensively because they're playing a zone with four of the box and you have a guy coming back to help out? The key is you've got to stay in that box until he's all the way in. You can't rely on him to get there for that top shooter or one of the, the top two players who are in a shooting position. You have to stay in that box and get all the way to full strength before you're ready to relax a little bit. And nice job there by McRae of soaking that shot, giving Suter time to get back in, and they get the kill. Here's McArdle dodging under one man to the left-hand side. Chetner, the low shot, and Kirk just got a piece. Yeah, Chetner was in such a good spot there. If he knew how much space he had, he could have come towards the goal there and maybe attacked by another foot or two closer. Dinsdale on the opposite end for Saskatchewan with the cross check there by New York. Still in possession with McIntosh. Bouquet again makes the stop. And Suter's slow to get up. He got checked off ball. He's given the referee an earful. The Riptide have not gotten many calls. And, and this is one thing that, you know, there's so many referees in this league that there's no true home field advantage. They do their best to keep the game even, but sometimes you just feel like you cannot get any of the calls to go your way. Thorpe getting the pick inside. He'll take the long distance shot. And Saskatchewan will just deal with that, seeing that the New York shooters are well outside. I'd like to see Gail Thorpe get some more shots. So I'm glad to see him shooting. Sometimes those hard, outside shots are hard for goalies to read. So if they can shoot a few of those and then crash the rebounds, they might be able to pick up some garbage in front and put away some goals and get right back in this game. Thompson setting the pick there. Church was looking ahead. His target was Matthew Dinsdale that time. Saskatchewan behind. Cage that side, Bouquet just got a piece and we have players going out. It's Robinson along with Suter having words and more. Suits is trying to get this crowd into it. Rips Robinson's helmet off. Robinson still got his jersey up around his head. Robinson wanted no part of that. Suits no stranger to fisticuffs. He's thrown with the big boys since the day he got into this league. And he's trying to get the team going after getting cheap shot in the back of the head. Trying to get the crowd into it here. Andrew Suter in his 10th year in the NLL. Coach Reggie Thorpe has wanted to see the physicality and it's showcasing here against Connor Robinson. It's a 9-3 game. Let's see if the Riptide can mount this comeback on the other side. in the sandbar. This is super unique to the Riptide. We are down here on ground level. We have Jenga, we have Cornhole. There are pregame, uh, there are beer vouchers. You can have Jersey Mike vouchers here, pregame beer specials out here. The Cornhole was lit. It's not quite as lit anymore, but all my friends are out here hanging out, guys. Having a good time, yeah? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Time for the boys. That's right. This is the place to be the sandbar with the Riptide. You can get your tickets online, buy them. Again, there are beer specials, Jersey Mike vouchers. Come hang out. If I was down here, I would be playing Jenga. If anyone wants to challenge me to a game of Jenga or Cornhole, come out and I'll play you. Guys? Great stuff, Danny. Thank you very much. The sport of box lacrosse is such a rich history. And Peter Schwartz documented that in his article on the New York Riptide's website as well. There's a look at the Jenga game, Mitch, that I'm not too good at. How about you? Not. You know what? My kids are three and one, so we're on a very simple level when it comes to more matching games. That's where we're at right now. Hard to believe a 12-year hiatus at Box the Cross is back on Long Island. This is the home opener for the New York Riptide after a three-game road swing. Two men are in the box. Suter 
and Thompson for New York and Saskatchewan, respectively. A foot is in the crease there for the rush. It will come out here for the rim side in transition with Jetner in a 2v1 situation. Going inside for Thorpe, and he's robbed there by Kirk. Great look by Bouquet, and what a feed and what a handle there by Thorpe. They've done a nice little rim tie. have done such a nice job of handling those tough passes. But Kirk has been there every step of the way. They're trying to shoot that, that five hole between his legs where that big stick as he moves doesn't protect. And good, good on Kirk. He's been able to cover that up every time. Here are the rush. The offensive possession now again off the boards at Karams. Into the hands of Dan McRae, he throws it down, and he was looking that time for Wagner, the new acquisition. The stick check there by Kirk, and it's read well by Corbeil. They'll come the opposite length of the floor. Yeah, the tough thing here, Dave, is the Riptide can't sit back, right? They're starting to get tired. They played a game last night, but they can't sit back. They have to fight through these picks. I will say the biggest difference is half. They're absorbing shots, knocking down passes, knocking down shots. They're making it really difficult on the rush to get that tic-tac-toe passing that was so effective in the first half. So huge credit to the adjustments they made in terms of getting sticks and lanes, making sure they're putting their bodies in the shooting lanes, and they're going to be bruised up tomorrow. But at the end of the day, that's what's going to let them get back in this game. Digby and Gibson on the floor. There was the shot by Kelly. Messenger has it for the rush. Dodging two. The last player was McCardle. And the ref's got his arm off. They're going to call that a hold. And this is where these tight games, those calls, you got to let the players play. Those are ones that are tough to swallow. There was really no impact on the play. Maybe a, a small hold there, but Messenger still got through there. That's going to be a tough one. McIntosh with the shot, and Bouquet touches that. And that will bring us to another man advantage that Suter and Thompson go out of the boxes, but another New York player is coming inside for another Saskatchewan power play. We talked about them needing to get better at the penalty kill. Well, they're getting plenty of opportunities this game. So that is the one positive. They've been able to kill the last two penalties. If they can string together a couple more, this gives them the confidence to, to feel good about that unit and, and start working on those special teams, which that's the chemistry, those special teams plays, those transition plays, that can make the difference in a game if your five on five offense and defense isn't playing its best. So if those are new to the box of the indoor game, they see this for the box defensively in the zone. What are you looking out here for the New York grip side to try to negate this power play? The top two players, they're trying to cover the top three shooters from the rush while the bottom two players try to anchor the crease and just soak the shots and not let the ball skip back and forth. It's, it's not a pretty job, but someone's got to do it, and, and you got to be big and tough to be down low on that spot where McRae is. There's a skip pass there to the right-hand side. Keenan and Radigan got a piece for the second time on that possession. Suter has it here and needs help for New York, down six goals. Two seconds to go in the quarter, and the Thorpe shot goes wide, and that will do it for the third stanza from Nassau Coliseum. They won that quarter, one nothing. The Riptide won that quarter, so they need to start chipping away and stringing together a couple more here, but they were able to win that quarter. They held Saskatchewan, and they scored a goal on the power play. That's good news. The Log Island faithful are enjoying themselves here at Nassau Coliseum in the sandbar and encouraging their team to roar back. They're down six goals, start of the fourth next. If you love the NLL, you'll love all the highlights on our social channels. Get the best goals, saves, and action during the games and during the week on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and NLL.com. What for the New York Riptide have won 9 of 15 on faceoffs and a great crowd on hand at NYCB Live over the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. It's great to have. New York lacrosse back here on Long Island. The crowd's fired up. The days of the Titans, the Lizards, and now the New York Riptide in action as we start the fourth quarter from the Coliseum. It's 9-6 Saskatchewan with the six-goal advantage. Dan McCardle is in the box of the power play. It's Keenan, and Bouquet got just a piece. Now, what do you want to see on the offensive side from New York? Because you said defensively the team has done well. Yeah, they really have figured, figured out the rush. 
on the defensive end. Offensively, they just need to make sure they're getting, we talked about this from day one, they gotta get to the middle, and they gotta keep taking shots. They've only taken a few of those outside shots. Scale Dorf, I think Coach Reggie, his dad is saying, shoot, shoot, shoot. We gotta get some shots on gauge, and it's true. So they gotta shoot, and they gotta crash the net for rebounds. This is where, if you lose by six, or if you lose by 12, it doesn't matter. You gotta take a little bit more chances to try to make up that gap. This is encouraging the Riptide lead by seven loose balls, 62 to 55. It was a plus 40 advantage for New England last night at Mohegan Sun. It's Jordy Jones Smith twisting and turning away, but a good check that time by the New York Riptides. Tyson Gibson, the number one pick, who had one goal and four assists last night. You want to see Gibson getting more into action on the offense. Yeah, you can see, looking behind the play, you see the rush actually. Hung Robert Church, or sorry, Ben McIntosh, nice and low here, anticipating that offense, making, forcing the Riptide into a four-on-four -four game. Stick check there by the New York Riptide. Numbers the opposite way, orchestrated by Johnson on the 3v2. It's got Johnson walking in, and Kirk has it before he can get through the five-hole. Corbeil down. What a four-on-two here. Corbeil to the left out. The front door was McIntosh, and Bouquet got just a piece. Corbeil still with it, and a fresh 30 for the rush. Corbeil, the longtime captain of the, ru captain of the rush. Good job moving that ball in transition, and a great save by Bouquet. Like I said, his confidence is, is at an all-time high right now. If they can ride that to get a couple more goals, they're right back in this game. Disdale setting the screen, and it was Mark Matthews, and it just got the pipe, and maybe Bouquet that time. Chetner lost it for a moment, and regains it. It has possession at the good outlet to Radzowitz in transition. I'll tell you, Mitch, Radzowitz has been getting up the floor nicely throughout this game, but there's been no opportunities to get it towards the crease for him. Yeah, just such great sound defense by the rush of getting back in their zone and preventing the break. They do a really nice job of that, and, and that comes with so much veteran leadership. On the skip pass, this time it's Kelly getting the screen by Digby Cotter. Kelly with a crease dive there. That comes off its mark there. Foot was in the crease. We'll go back to the rush on the opposite side with Cornwall. Dave, that was a great offensive set. Everyone touched the ball. They moved it around to Connor Kelly for a nice look. That dive, I think if he kept control, he had that backside pipe. So great work. They need a few more of those. Start stringing those together, and the, the shots will fall at the end. Keenan and Chandler are setting the screens, respectively. On the left-hand side, it's McIntosh and just wide. Five to shoot here on the shot clock here for Shatler, former league MVP that was knocked out in front. Church was almost there, and Bouquet has it. And what a second half it's been, as Mitch has documented, for Alex Bouquet. His team allowed nine goals at the break. As we start the fourth, hasn't allowed any in the second half. On the right-hand side, it's Gibson that time. He'll mark up on the left. And here's Tyson Dale, and he'll get the pick from Digby. Get it on the left again, it's Longboat, and Kirk rid it well from right to left. Kirk does a really nice job of stepping out to the shooter, and that's one thing, if you can't get the ball side to side quickly, which the Riptide haven't been able to because the rush are keeping their sticks in lanes, that allows the goalie to really step way out and take away the angle. So Kirk is doing a great job of that because of the help he's getting from the rush defense. And that's a great turnover there by the New York Riptide Suter. And it's a 2v1 opportunity here for New York. Suter gets tripped up and a penalty coming up against Saskatchewan and he gets off the shot. What a play in a sequence that time by Suter. Now it's touched up by the rushes. Thompson, Rannigan just kicks it. And finally, we'll get a stoppage of play and a call up coming. Fournier, you see that kick in the ball, you're allowed to play without your stick. Unlike field and box across, you can actually play just like hockey. If your stick breaks, you drop it, you can play just like you would without, as long as you don't hold the hold the other players. No, no, they have not Could this be a sign for the New York rip tie to break some life here in the fourth? Number 42, two minutes, tripping. Tripping call call against the assistant captain, Mark Matthews. Here's why. Andrew Suter doing a nice job pushing in transition. He had a similar transition goal last night. You know, Matthews is a little upset about that. He didn't think he actually tripped him. It was one of those things their feet got tangled up a little bit. But that's what happens when you keep going hard to the goal. Good things happen, so good to Suter for pushing the ball to the net. Power play here for the rim side. Gibson on the left. The pick by Digby, and it carried off of Corbett. Off of Corbeil, and then the goaltender, Kirk, get a souvenir into the crowd at the Coliseum. Messenger. 
Trying to get past Wagner that time around the crease, so they'll wheel it back up to the left wing. Shatler's on the right-hand side. On this penalty kill. Dave, there's Saskatchewan. Dave, there are two schools of thought here with five defenders and only four rush players on offense. You could double the ball right away, or you could hang back and have an extra help guy. It looks like the Riptide have opted for that extra help guy. The key is he has to be low enough that he can support all spots on the floor in case they try for that inside feed, which they looked for here. Inside a minute to go on the power play here. Gibson to the right-hand side of the shot by Chetler was deflected by the Ross. Six to shoot. Digby behind the back. It's Kelly, and that goes off of Kirk. I think that hit Messenger. Another block shot by the Rush. The Rush have been putting their bodies on the line. Kirk's got a lot of thank yous to hand out after this game. We have four in the box defensively. On the right-hand side, the left shot off of Messenger yet again. He got another piece for the second time. And those cross crease looks, that's what they need to get Kirk moving side to side. As he mentioned, he takes that big step out towards the shooter. You draw him out, move it backside, and then you have an empty look in the backside of the net. This goal was scored by Church. They made a nine spot for Saskatchewan. Tickley also has two goals in the game. Tickley at the last for New York. Shot there by McIntosh to the left. It was Bouquet diving into the corner board is Scott Johnston. We're gonna get another call, bitch. As we will come to another timeout with one second to go on this man advantage for the New York Riptide. But it will be another New York player possibly going to the box. 8.43 remaining in the fourth quarter of the home opener. 9-3 the rush lead. Dave Leno, Mitch Belisle, Danny Wexelman, and our entire crew on BR Live in MSG. Saskatchewan leads this one 9 3 is the upcoming schedule for the New York Riptide. This is in the midst of a three game homestand with the Wings coming just after the new year, followed by Mitch's former team, the Georgia Swarm. San Diego comes into the tail end of January, New England, and Georgia for tickets. Visit NewYorkRiptide.com. And if you haven't seen the indoor box lacrosse game, it is exciting end to end physical you have outdoor players playing on the indoor team and you also have guys that have so much experience in college around the united states and also canada and the provinces north of the border yeah the canadian game is the box game but more and more americans have been playing which is good for the sport it's good for the league it's good for teams like the riptide as they recruit a mix of americans and canadians and what an effort that was that was a mlb-like effort by gibson to save that ball from their own bench and then draws a penalty because of that effort. So great work there by Gibson. Those little efforts are huge. Gibson goes over the wall, brings it back in play, and then runs to a check from Thompson. Nice job there to not only save the ball, but also to draw the penalty. It's gonna be a tripping miter called against the rush. Another power play here for the New York grip tied. Looks like Thompson's going to go back to the box where he's been a frequent visitor to yeah, I was going to say, the Thompson brothers not known for their uh, their penalty taking, but he's been in the box three times. It's like the, the bad guy hat trick. Our play here for the Riptide. It's Gibson went behind the cage of Kirk that time. The last goal was scored at 3.55 into the third quarter in this one. It's 9-3, the rush lead. Yeah, this is something that the Riptide can build off of. No matter what happens here down the stretch, th their defense has put together quite the show here in the third quarter, beginning of the or first half of the fourth quarter. So these are what they need to start stringing together, and that comes with that experience, that chemistry of playing together as a team. Church getting the pick that time. It was a good stick check there by New York. But the loose ball is won there by Saskatchewan, and that was the end of the shot clock there for Keenan, so he'll just dump it in into the zone of New York. And Dave, Coach Thorpe mentioned in their bye week, they had individual calls where they reviewed individual film with every player. And so that's a great learning opportunity. But the big thing is games like this, where you have these long defensive stands, now you have some good film to go back to and say, hey, this worked for us as a team. This is where we were at our best. So if they can start stringing these together, they're in great shape. And it's Longbow that time. Kirk had it for the rush. Here's the transition with Cornwall. Are back there defensively for New York. 
Cornwall will get it back on the return. That skip pass inside was looking for Dizdale, and Bouquet was there. A little, little help from his friend, the Iron, there, I think. And a couple of pipes have definitely been Bouquet's good buddy here in this second half. So Gibson out there with Digby. Also, Connor Kelly comes in off the bench here for the rip tie. To that right-hand side, Chetner. Digby. To Jean Luc Chetner again on the right, coming around. The shot goes wide, but it ends up to Gibson there, and it didn't fool Evan Kirk, who's had a marvelous game tonight with only three goals allowed on that outlet to Corbeil. Now you've played with Evan Kirk. What have you made of his night, Mitch? He's played a great game, and, and it helps when you have a fantastic defense ahead of you. And, and you see the numbers that Aaron Bold had when he was on the rush. When you have that hard work and defense that takes away. Those outside, I'm sorry, takes away the inside shots and, and knocks down passes and soak shots for you. That gives you confidence, like I mentioned, to step out to the shooters and, and really have that confidence in your team. So he, he's played a great game and, and he's got his defense to rely on to make sure that, uh, that it's easier for him. There's six minutes to go into regulation and a hard hit into the boards by Messenger and Cornwall that time. How about that? 11 goals scored in our first half, just one. Just one by Digby in the second. That's remarkable. Shatler on the right-hand side was keen in that time. Uh, offensive possession here for Saskatchewan. It's back at Taj with a crease dive there to no avail. A big testament to the Riptide defense of shoring things up. Uh, those halftime adjustments of getting those sticks in the lanes, putting a little bit more pressure on the ball here. It's, it's really showing. Connor Kelly still shooting outside. So you want to see those closer range shots, in particular down the middle for New York. It's Rubish now in possession. Walking in Rubish and Bouquet to his left had it. Here's Ranigan. Has Fournier up top of the left wing. Ranigan trying to get past Disdale. Will find Suter. Suter will take the shot and Kirk finds it. And Kirk is doing a good job of sprawling low. Haven't seen too many high shots from the Riptide that have hit the net. So they've got Kirk dropping. It's getting late in the game. But if they can shoot for those upper corners, they might, they might find a little bit more success as Kirk tries to cover down everything low in 5 hole. 430 to go of the fourth. Dave Leto, Mitch Belisle, Danny Wexelman, and our entire crew on BR Live and MSG2. It's the NLL Game of the Week from Nassau Coliseum. Church, who's been quieted, though he does have a hat trick tonight. Inside for Shatler, met by Suter, the behind the back shot. And a shot clock violation on Saskatchewan. That will bring us to another timeout. 4.13 to go in our fourth quarter. It is the home opener for the New York Riptide. It's been a great defensive stand for New York, although they're down six goals. A lot to look forward to on the other side. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Geico. And it goes to the nifty passing by the wash, and it ends up in a goal for Robert Church. Dave, we're going to see a little pulled goalie here to start this quarter. That was an unbelievable passing, that tic-tac-toe passing. That's what the Riptide are starting to try to work towards here, building that chemistry so they can get that no-look passing down to a science. And here you'll see they actually have their goalie pulled out of the net with a six attacker. They're going to try to run a quick play and then probably put Bouquet right back in the net. You'll see he's the first player at the door. If you can see the bench, he's right there, ready to go. As soon as the Riptide run a little bit of a play, they'll probably sub the six player off and get him back out on the, on the floor. 4-10 to go in regulation. Thorpe on the right-hand side. That cross crease pass looking for Gibson. Kirk had it perfectly. And that's just what they wanted drawn up. And Gibson, Gibson with an absolute baseball bat chopped down low. He did not like what was happening. The ref gives him a warning. I think he saw that what happened to him first. Digby on the right-hand side. The shot again from distance from Lomas. It was Kirk there. Helping out, and here come the Saskatchewan Russia transition with Hasek. <laughs> There's all kinds of Everybody behind was focused the scenes down there, action. Yes, behind. In the swarm, end, I'm sorry, in the rush end. A little extracurriculars, Corpiel on the 1-2. And Bouquet has it for New York. The long outlet up ahead. McRae, the captain, wants help. Behind the black, Thorpe to the right-hand side for New York. McArdle. Suter, the shot. Can't go five ball there on Evan Kirk tonight. Has only allowed three goals. Cornwall with three minutes to go. 
thought about it here in Saskatchewan will wisely slow the pace down with inside three to play. Yeah, and this is where if you're the riptide, you want to buckle down because, I mean, you always want to win a game, but with three minutes left, down by six, obviously they want to try to come back. But if they can go away from this game saying, we didn't give up a second half goal, talk about the momentum that you're able to build there. All right, so it's went down there for New York. So it will be possession here for the rush and a fresh 30 on the shot clock. Nice pick off there by Suter. It's got ends up in a 2v1. Suter. Gets help from Radzowitz, it's Radzowitz, and he can't get it past Kirk. That's been the story tonight. He just ran out of room and ran out of time there. Nice job by Kirk of playing his angles. But a great little two-man game by Suter and Radzowitz there. There's the crease dive, and it's in once again for the rush. Jeff Shetler adds another, and it's 10-3. Saskatchewan has the lead. Just that, that two-man game, just like basketball, Dave, you're so familiar. The pick, the roll, they find that little seam. Keenan comes down as soon as that, they feel that double team. And you know what? I would love to see Reggie challenge this one. I think Schaller's foot might have just been on the white line with the white shoes, white line. It's going to be tough. But in a 10-3 game, you, oh, there it goes. And there's the, there's the laundry. We got another challenge here from head coach Reggie Thorpe. It's his second tonight. If they had a contest closest to the uh, center dot, Coach Thorpe, that was pretty spot on. That was almost right at the ref's feet. Shatler with his second goal this evening. It stands right now with 2.11 to go. There's the head coach and general manager of the New York Riptide, Reggie Thorpe, also coach of the U.S. men's indoor team. And that means Bob Hollingsworth, the crew chief, will go inside the official scores booth and have a look. New York challenging here this goal by Jeff Shatler, 2011 Transition Player of the Year. And here's what they're looking at on the feed from Keenan. They're going to look if his right foot touches the line. Man, is that close. White shoe, white line. That's going to be tough from that angle to overturn the on-field on, on field call of a goal. Unless they can get a different angle that gives him a better look at it. Oh, tough, tough placement of the stanchion there, right in the way of the camera. Mitch, how about the off-ball movement, though, from Shatler, just following Keenan and keeping his eyes focused to receive that pass right outside the crease? Well, and that two-man game is, is so successful because the rush, they play that waiting game. You saw how Keenan drew the defenseman to him, waited, 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 and then just a little feather pass to Shatler. Shatler has a lot of room and time over there because they have all that space on that two-man side. We mentioned the strong side versus the weak side. Weak side being the two-man game. You really have a lot of real estate to work with, whereas on the strong side with three righties over there, they're cramming it with three offensive players, three de defensive players. So nice job by Keenan Shatler of finding that soft gap, making it work, and then waiting out Bouquet and, and bearing it back short side. Again, I, I think it's tough to tell because it's tough to tell and they called it a goal. I, I find it hard to believe that they're going to overturn this one. The view is over and here's the call for the crew chief, Bob Hollingsworth tonight. It's the crowd at the Coliseum. Upon further review, the shooter's foot was on the line. So it won't be a no goal. goal. It's violation. waved no off goal. Shatner's foot. It's in the crease and Reggie Thorpe wins the challenge. Well, good thing. Good thing I'm not wearing the black and white tonight, but definitely wanted to be popular with the home crowd. He, he certainly found a way to. And again, you'll see Bouquet in the bench, trying to draw something up, trying to get that six on five advantage and, and score a couple goals here to bring this within reach. One goal waved off for each team. 2.05 to go and an empty net. Kelly shot. Hit a rush player to the right-hand side, McCardle. Here's the duck opportunity for the riptide. It was Lomas, a foot was in the crease. It will come out here for the rush. And this is under two minutes, so likely they're gonna review this from the officials. If they think there's any chance of that going in, they're gonna review it. And his foot was not in the crease when he dove, so I think that's what they were conferring on. Was his foot in? No, okay, well then let's go ahead and let's review that. So Bob Hollingsworth, a busy man in this sequence, will go back to the review area and will take a look because it appeared 
And the crease dive was successful there for Dan Lomas in the duck opportunity. And it might have resulted in a riptide goal. His feet certainly weren't in. It's just a question. Oh, the ball definitely looked like that was in. That was beautiful. That's about as well as you can draw that out. Would be the first goal tonight for Dan Lomas, who will be a six this year. He's been so good for the New York Riptide this year. And Lomas is getting an opportunity to be that go-to guy on that left-hand side. That's something that he's really relished that opportunity and taken advantage of. He has scored so far the first two games. He also scored against New England, so three consecutive games scored for Dan Lomas. Could it be four? Unless this ball somehow defied the laws of physics and, and came back out after Lomas wrapped it in, the angle was perfect. He brought it back into the goal. As he dove across, you can see him hook his stick back with his backhand and pull it in. The only question is, does he get caught on Kirk's jersey and pulled out? They're giving this a good hard look. Again, the, the call on the field was no goal. So it needs to be incontrovertible incontro evidence to overturn that. A great pass there behind the cage. And what a crease dive by Dan Lomas. Astor with Vancouver played four games, two goals and assists at Mohegan Sun last night. Dave, you asked about how the game has changed. This this dive from behind the goal, this is something that I would say at the beginning of my career did not see that, that that often. Every now and then, and now every team has at least one play where they have this drawn up. Whether it's one guy that's really good at it, or whether it's just to get the defense to turn their heads and focus and then feed the ball back up top, every team has some kind of play with this dive behind it. And back in my day, as I used to say, it just wasn't quite as often. That's great stuff there. It's Reggie Thorpe looking on here, and we'll get the call from Bob Hollingsworth. 157 to go. Upon further review, the ball crossed the goal line before the player's foot was down. We have a good goal. And Dan Lomas has scored in four consecutive games. Bob Hollingsworth, he's looking to win points with the folks out in Long Island. That's two right there who's come out of the booth and give them the answer they want. Great possession there for the New York Riptide. And how about the fight that they have in the latter stages of this one against the Rush, who have won titles in three of the last five years. Kelly to the right-hand side with 140 to go, and the shot is well wide. Kelly will recollect with 23 to go on the shot clock. Digby out of the front door, though, and it's scooped up by Garland and Saskatchewan. Across the center line this time. It's Corbeil, the captain. Wants help. will find Garland. And he's going to wisely reset here with 120 to go in the game. And the rush looks like they're most likely going to end on a power play as the arm is up. And Kirk is taking a lap to the bench. See 11 goals scored in the first half, just two by New York in the second, none by the Russ so far. Bouquet uh, and the defense has been terrific for New York, starting with the third quarter. And we might be looking at a penalty shot here. Let's check this call, though, for the officials. Under two minutes, we have illegal substitution. Okay which results in a penalty shot. So if you have an illegal substitution under two minutes, that's an automatic penalty shot. So an exciting element of the game. This will be a penalty shot here for the rush against Bouquet. So Bouquet has been excellent this half. Now he gets an opportunity to do it right there on a pillar in front of everybody, one-on-one. -on -one. He's one of the most dangerous scorers. Ben McIntosh. The ref's got Here's McIntosh. The rush leading 9-4. Out to the left. McIntosh beats Bouquet. And there's number 10 for the night for the Saskatchewan rush. And Ben McIntosh adds to his total this evening.
And Dave, the, the reason they go with the penalty shot there is to discourage teams from trying to send a guy out of the box too early, especially late. So see McIntosh takes his time, walks across the top, and buries that. Fakes far side, brings it back near side. When you have that much time and that much skill, it's just too easy for these offensive players in the league. Last year, McIntosh had 41 goals and 36 assists. Every year, he's had at least 32 goals. That's the player that he is out of Drexel in Westchester, PA. One minute to go in the New York Riptides home opener, and a lot to take away from this one, Mitch. Despite them being down here by six goals, it's been a terrific second half as Bouquet comes off and an extra man out. Yeah, the bottom line, this is a 2-2 half right now. So if they can erase the deficit that they had in the beginning, they're right there in this game. They're looking inside at the top of the crease for Digby, but the rush have it here with 36 seconds to play. The messenger will be in no hurry for Saskatchewan. Yeah, despite the empty net, you'll see they're just trying to kill this clock, get it down as low as they possibly can. Matthews here, double T behind the back with the open goal, and it's Robert Church give him four on the night. That was majestic by Matthews, and 11 goals tonight by yeah. the rush on the road. That was just sick. Dave, the skill displayed by Matthews there. Double team throws a one hand behind the back, underhand pass right on the tape for the empty net. And that's, you know, there's, there's no time left in the clock. He's just kind of firing it over to a teammate, so low risk and and those were that's one of those things you can't just roll it in the corner that's the second behind the back assist from mark matthews tonight again four goals by robert church and the riptide here i'm just gonna let this one run out Five seconds to go in the home open, and the McCardle shot goes wide, and that will do it for the first game in the Nassau Coliseum for the New York Riptide this season. They fall 11-7 to the Saskatchewan Rush. Saskatchewan will improve to 2-1. The Riptide will fall to 0-4. Oh on the other side, we'll continue to wrap this one up from the Coliseum. Eleven of four is the final here at the Nassau Coliseum. The rush will improve to two and one. And let's go downstairs. Danny's joined by Connor Kelly. Danny. Guys, thank you so much. Connor, the first home goal in Riptide history. Not necessarily the whole outcome that you wanted, but in your mind, how do you build upon that historical goal and move forward? Right. Uh, yeah, it means a lot. Honestly, we're writing our story as the New York Riptide new franchise. It's an honor to be a part of this. Thanks to the fans for coming out. Uh, but we're writing our story. So we're going to bounce back. Uh, we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep finding our identity right now. So uh, we got a lot of leadership in there. So uh, I'm excited about next week. The next home game just a week away here at the barn. What takeaways do you bring from tonight's game and, and work on this week and then put, put to practice in the game? Right, we just got to continue to trust each other. Uh, like I said, awesome leadership in there. Continue to build on offense. We got to find our chemistry, uh, working with Marsh, working with our offense, and defensively, just keep buckling down. Uh, hey, we got a long season. We got next week to uh, show it. We got a, a, a um, going against the Philly. It's going to be a huge game. So. And lastly, the fans, I mean, they came out, they showed out. What do you want to say to people who want to come watch next week? Hey, we're going to continue to get better, like I said, and I hope the fans continue to uh, play with us, fight with us, and uh, cheer for us. So they were awesome tonight. I appreciate them, all of them, for coming out. Long Island Strong, New York is a great uh, state, so I'm excited to be a part of this. Connor, thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Danny. And the Riptide finished two shots of their season-high 48 tonight. Mitch, your final thoughts on this historic night? Yeah, they were able to get shots to the cage unfortunately Kirk was just there for most of them I thought defensively is where they can build the most they did a really nice job they out loose balled the rush they did a great job on the on the penalty kill which is something that they really want to build off of um, so if they can just get a little bit better on the offensive end they're still going to compete every time Visit NLL.com for an all-access pass to the National Lacrosse League. For producers Scott Zalatoro, our statistician Corey Cross Hansen, Mitch Belial, Danny Wexelman, and our entire crew, this is Dave Leto saying thanks so much for watching tonight. You have been watching the National Lacrosse League on MSG and Beer.
yard live. Good night, everyone.